Well, happy Friday, everybody. I hope you've had a great week and are looking forward to worshiping Jesus this Sunday. And by the way, Sunday is a Father's Day, and we're looking forward to celebrating that here at First Baptist. And I hope all you men are planning to be in church, bring your families with you. And moms, wives, children, I hope you are already got your plans for how you're going to honor Dad and, uh, and honor him in worship, but also throughout the day. Make it a great day for Dad at your home. In our Bible reading plan today, we are in Joshua chapter 2. They are encamped on the, the, the east side of the Jordan River across from Jericho, getting ready to uh, begin the conquest of the Promised Land. And uh, before doing that, Joshua sends out two spies to get the lay of the land, particularly what's the situation in Jericho. And those two spies make their way to the home of a harlot named Rahab, and she assists them. She helps them, and because of that, they will later protect her and her family when they uh, conquer and destroy the city of Jericho. <clears throat> But what I want to focus on is how um, when, when God is at work, it creates a buzz. In chapter 2, verses 9 and following, the spies are now uh, at Rahab's house, and she says to the men, to these two spies, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that God has given to the Hebrew people this promised land, and that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land have melted away before you. We know we cannot defeat you because of your God. Verse 10, for we have heard, now listen to this, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. Now, remember, that happened 40 years earlier. The Jewish people, the Hebrew people, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years after after the parting of the Red Sea, for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness before entering the promised land. So Rahab is saying, we remember what God did for you all 40 years ago, and it was so spectacular. We still know not only what happened, but we know that your God is real and that uh, we, we, can't, we don't stand a chance against you. And, uh, and then goes on to talk about some of the military battles that, had happened in the past. Then verse 11, when we heard it, our hearts melted and no courage remained in any man any longer because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. She said, we know that your God is great. I know that he is the God. And then she cuts a deal because if, if she's going to help them so they will protect her and her family when they invade Jericho. Now, just a couple of things real quick. Forty years earlier, God divided the Red Sea, parted the sea, and delivered Israel from Egypt. Forty years later, Rahab and the people in Jericho remembered that, and it still make, made an impact on them. Do you understand that when you and I celebrate what God does, the victories, the wins, the blessings, the power, the salvation, the change. When we talk about what God's doing in our life today, uh, when we brag on him because of his great deeds, that um, that's the best PR there is. Be better than any ad we might put on television or in a newspaper uh, or on Facebook or anything else. Um, the best, the best way to spread the greatness of God is to talk about the great things that God does. It makes an impression on people, and it lasts. It sticks around. When you are silent, you are diminishing the reputation of God. When you celebrate the works of God, you are building up God and being a witness. So talk about what Jesus is doing in your life. Talk about how he speaks to you through his word, how he guides you and blesses you. The other thing that jumped out at me is, is when she said in the middle of verse 11, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on, on earth beneath. Verse 12, now therefore please swear to me by the Lord uh, in, in, our, in my English Bible, in both those verses, the word Lord is in capital letters, L-O-R-D. And 
in mine and many English translations, whenever you see the word Lord in all capital letters, that means that in the original Hebrew, it is the holy sacred name for God, Yahweh. So not only did Rahab know about the great deeds of God over the years in delivering the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt, she knew his sacred name, Yahweh. She knew who he was, and she knew that he was the God of heaven and earth. Wow. Um, hey, dads, do your kids, do your grandkids know anything great God has done in your life? You ever told them? Do they know your story, your faith journey, how you came to be a follower of Jesus? Do, do they know about key moments in your life when Jesus showed up and did something wonderful in your life? Do, do, do you ever brag on Jesus and talk about what he's done and what he's doing in your life to your kids and your grandkids? That's a big part of discipling your children is bragging on Jesus in front of them and saying, let me tell you what God did in my life. Share your story. Dads, uh, yes, your wife and your kids need to honor you this Father's Day, but be a man of God and um, celebrate Father's Day by telling somebody in your family your story. Share with them your journey and all that God's done. And let God use you to bless them. Hey, God bless you. Look forward to seeing you in Worship Sunday and then next Monday with another devotion. Thank <laughs> you.